This guy here is probably the largest sounding vintage single ended amp out there. Hey everyone, this is Carlos from Amalgam Audio. Welcome to the Storytime episode where we look at the Supro 1606, which is Supro's smallest amp in their lineup. It is a 5 watt single ended amp that features only three tubes. It has a tube rectifier, one 6v6 output tube and one 12x7 preamp tube. It features only a volume control that acts also as an on off switch. So you switch it on and adjust the volume that you need. Even among uh, the single ended amps, it is physically the smallest box that I've seen so far. But despite this, uh, when you mic it up, it sounds really massive. It can actually sound bigger on the recording than the 1600 or for example the 1624. So it has a really huge soundscape and it has the ability to sound really close up in your face in the mix. That is uh, thanks to the very uh, defined and open mids that this amp features. Although it doesn't have any uh, tone controls or um, a tone stack to speak of. It has three different inputs that vary a bit in regard to the treble and bass response. So you can adjust some of the signal by going into one of their respective inputs. Many of the single-ended amps that were produced in the United States in this era have the same complement of tubes. It is 112x7, it is a 6v6 uh, power tube, and a 5y3 rectifier tube. But each of them sounds really unique. And even despite a lot of similarities in the schematic, each and every small component change has a really big effect on the tone, especially because those amps are so simple and have just a couple of components to speak of. So what makes uh, single-end amps so special? They differ from the push-pull AB amps, uh, which we are more familiar with, in multiple ways. So this single-ended amp, like so many, features just one output tube. And this one output tube takes care of the amplification of the top and lower side of the sine wave. This makes the signal clearer and more open. There is no crossover distortion, as for example in the class AB amps, where this crossover from one tube that takes care of the top of the sine wave to the other tube, there is no switch over that is required for uh, this process. So there's no chance for a crossover distortion and uh, this makes uh, the amp sound clearer and more open as opposed to the uh, class AB amps. The output stage functions uh, in a different way than class AB amps. The output stage works at 100% all the time. It doesn't matter if you dial in the volume control uh, really low or if you go up to the maximum. The output stage is wide open continuously. And one of the side effects uh, for this is that single ended amps don't have the same type of compression that you uh, find in class AB amps. And this is why this small tiny amp will sound really open, huge and uh, articulate despite it being only a 5 watt amp. Another design difference for a single-ended class A amp is that it doesn't need a phase splitter in the circuit. So this means that designers can incorporate one tube less than in the usual designs. So that is uh, the explanation why it only features uh, one preamp tube, which is the 12AX7. So in many ways, this is the simplest design you can uh, make. But there is one component in the single-ended uh, class A amp that is uh, actually uh, rather difficult to produce, and that is the output transformer. The output transformer in a single-ended amp is uh, very different from the Class AB amps. It doesn't have the counterwound uh, windings of a Class AB output transformer, so this has also effects on the tonal characteristics. This means that the second-order harmonics that this amp produces are not cancelled out by the output transformer. And this is also the reason why those single-ended amps will produce a very um, specific tone that is rich in the second order harmonics. Also compared to the class AB amps, the output transformer on single-ended amps can be considered inefficient. For single-ended amps, the output transformer actually has to be twice the size of the usual uh, class AB amps. So this is also the reason why you usually see uh, only really small amps that are designed around the single-ended amp uh, principle. More recently, there is a couple of um, boutique uh, manufacturers of tube amps who will actually offer um, high-powered uh, single-ended amps, but uh, that is really the exception, and I'm not aware of any um, vintage uh, single-ended uh, amps that are more powerful than, let's say, four to five watts. So how does this little thing actually sound? It has a very bold, big, and open tone. It doesn't have the usual compression that you find in the Class AB amps, and it has a very nicely defined top end. 
Let's mic it up and dial in some beautiful tones. I find that my favorite mic, which is the Royer R101, is a good fit for this amp, as it has a lot of low end and, and punch for this uh, small uh, package. You can actually get by by micing it up really in a centered position. In this case, I'll position the R101 right at the center and moving relatively close to the grill cloth. In case you've seen one of our previous episodes, we featured a Supro 1600R and that is a much bigger amp uh, in regard to the cabinet size and it is a Class IB push-pro amp and has three times the power as this amp. And I mentioned that this little guy here could actually sound bigger on a recording than uh, the 1600R. And this is uh, what I would like to show you uh, this time around. So the Royer that we're going to use has a lot of proximity effects. So with this sort of uh, amp that already has a lot of uh, punch, despite the small speaker in there, it's only an eight inch speaker in here, you can still get a lot of low end that can start to rumble if you get too close to the glue cloth. So it is important to back up a bit to get a nicer balance between the high end and the low end. And as this only has one volume control and no other tone controls, I would say that about four or five on the volume is roughly the sweet spot of this amp. This is where it starts to crunch up, but it has also the most amount of dynamics where you can balance between a clean tone and a more oak driven tone. I'll play a couple of chords on the Supro 1606 with my favorite guitar, which is the Yamaha SA1000. Fabian will play you out with some captures we made of this amp. Like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content and see you around.